in the previous lesson, we added another effect to our app component by using the use effect hook. And what that effect did is use JavaScript's built in set interval function in order to establish an interval at which point this function will repeatedly run. And we used that function to update our time piece of state and we render that time piece of state, which is why we're able to see the time update every second here in our component. But as it turns out, our implementation has a big problem with it, a bug, and that is that this interval will persist, or in other words, continue to exist, even if our component is removed from the DOM. So we have not had a lot of experience with component unmounting, which simply means that the component is taken off the DOM, but it is actually a big part of React. Right now, all of the components that we've built have been self-contained. It's basically been just one component or maybe a hierarchy of components being rendered in our application. But in the real world, we might have something like routes in our app. And if the user goes to slash employees, they might see this component and its children. And then if they go to, for example, uh, slash login, they'll see a login form, right? The point is that our website can have many different pages or routes, and each one can render a different component tree, which means as the user navigates, former components are completely torn down. They are completely removed from the DOM. And I want to simulate this scenario in this lesson and show you that despite the fact that our app component will be taken off screen, this interval will continue to exist. And of course, that is not good because it creates a memory leak. That means there is something that is going to continue running in the background that no longer has any relevance to the user. The user should only be seeing the time when they are looking at this component. So we want to stop this interval when the component is removed from the DOM. But as we'll come to see, the interval will continue to exist. So here's how I can demonstrate that to you. I'm going to go to our index.js file. And this, by the way, is where we are bootstrapping the React application. Right here is where we are finding the div with an ID of root. And here is where we are rendering the app component. And the following code that I am about to write, you do not need to copy. This is just for the sake of example. But below, what I'm going to do is once again use JavaScript's set timeout function. And that is going to allow us to run this function after a specified amount of time. And here, I'm going to put 5,000 milliseconds which is five seconds. And what I'm going to do five seconds after our React application loads is on my root object, which I reference above, there is a method called unmount. And as the name suggests, what that method will do is unmount the React application, remove it entirely, okay? So I'm gonna save this and our page will refresh. And now you can see the time clicks in and we're gonna wait about five seconds. And there we go, we can see that the code right here has worked and we have removed the React application. So now we're back to having a regular div with an ID of root. This is basically the contents of our original HTML file when the React app is uh, placed into, right? So we've done the inverse or the opposite of what we've done here. But check this out. If I go into my console, you'll see right here that my time is still being printed out. And that is coming from our console log right here on line 26 a console log, which was declared within this function that we passed into set interval, and then set interval itself was invoked within the use effect hook in the app component. So even though the app component is done, it's been removed, something that it's set up right here is still living, is still persisting, and we see that effect in the uh, console. And of course, in the console, it's not the worst thing in the world if we print something every one second, but you can obviously imagine how detrimental this could be in a real world app. For example, let's say you're maintaining a connection to a backend or to a database, and you keep that in persistence even after the component that is using that functionality is removed. That creates a lot more memory usage for the user. That creates potentially a burden on that backend service. So you generally want to clean up these kinds of things that you create, right? If it's no longer needed in code, then to free up memory, to free up space, and to speed up your application, we want to remove things like this. This is an example of a side effect that has lasted longer than it needs to, and that creates a problem. 
And in order to solve this problem, I'm going to uh, be able to introduce you to the last thing I need you to know about useEffect, which is cleanup functions. And I'll show you how that works in the next lesson.